All right, let's bring in Ro Khanna. Uh, he is congressman from uh, California, and he is going to be there tonight. Congressman, you heard uh, what uh, Nate Foy was talking about, this tragedy involving Lisbeth Medina in the state of Texas, as well, the suspect in Lake and Riley's murder, his name is Jose Ibarra, apparently has ties to a notorious Venezuelan gang. His brother, Jose, his brother uh, Diego, rather, is said to be a member of Tren de Aragua. Uh, which is also wreaking havoc in New York City. Now, tens of thousands of Venezuelans have been paroled into this country after they came across the border. Tens of thousands of more have been flown into this country in secret by the Biden administration. And a lot of people, Congressman, are rightly asking, what has Biden border policy unleashed on this country? Well, John, first of all, my heart goes out to the uh, victim's family. It was a brutal murder unconscionable, and I can only imagine the grief. Uh, second, we need to do a better job of making sure that we are vetting people before uh, they're coming across the border. That is why the president supported the border, bipartisan border legislation that would have added border agents, that would have done a better job of vetting. Third, if you really want to deal with the situation in Venezuela, we've got crippling sanctions there that haven't worked. Maduro is still in power, and that's leading to so many people leaving. And it, what we should be doing is relooking at those sanctions so we're not aggravating the problem. There, there are a lot of Republicans who say, look, the president could deal with this border problem tomorrow simply by reinstating all of those executive orders that he rescinded on his first day in office. Do you not agree? Well, there has to be a balance. I did not support and candor Donald Trump's policies. I didn't support mm -hmm. all uh, uh, the policies of uh, saying that uh, you needed to split up families. I didn't support the policies that said you could not, even if you had a legitimate asylum case, come to the United States. What I do support is more border patrol agents. What I do support is processing more folks before they come to the border. What I do support is having work authorization where they're, once they're here so that they can actually be productive and not on the public dole. I wish we could just get a bipartisan solution. So Fox News took a poll and asked people, has Biden succeeded or failed on border policy? 24% of people said he mostly succeeded. 71% said he has mostly failed. Where would you put it? Succeed or fail? Well, I wouldn't personalize it. I would say we, as a United States government, are failing, whether it's Republican or Democrat. I mean, the reality is we have uh, people coming into this country undocumented and in, in, in record numbers, and we haven't done enough to make sure that uh, we're vetting folks, that, that there is a secure border, mm -hmm. and that there's a process. And we aren't doing enough to make sure that people in Venezuela don't have uh, crippling economic yeah. conditions where they're leaving. So, so how do we deal with that is the question. Uh, we, we seem to hear about this almost all the time. The crimes that are perpetrated at the hands, allegedly, of illegal migrants are, are done by people who had committed other crimes and were let back out in the streets. Jose Ibarra is one of those people. The Lake and Riley Act, expected to be voted on in the House today, it would detain illegal immigrants who are charged with theft. That's what Jose Ibarra had been charged with. He was let out. He went to Georgia and allegedly killed Lake and Riley. Where do you come down on that bill? Where will, will your vote fall? I'll tell you why I and most Democrats are a no on that bill. Because the bill says that if you are uh, arrested, that you could be detained mm -hmm. indefinitely. I, I used to think, John, that in this country we used to have a jury process. You, you have to go through a process, you have your rights, and you uh, d decide whether you're convicted mm -hmm. or not. And to have someone detained without that due process, I think, is un American. Right? Even, even if that person allegedly goes on to kill a beautiful nursing student on the University of Georgia grounds? Well, obviously that is horrific, but yeah. you know what he did, which was steal two hundred dollars. I, I don't think people would have been able to draw a direct mm. correlation between everyone who steals two hundred dollars and being a brutal murderer. He deserves the entire book thrown at him, and I, I don't have an ounce of sympathy. And I was as outraged as yeah. anyone by his crime. But the policy needs to still uphold uh, our fundamental rights. There's one more thing I want to ask you about, Congressman. Uh, the outgoing climate czar, John Kerry, was talking about Russia's bad behavior with climate. And he said this. Listen here. If Russia has the ability to wage a war illegally uh, and invade another country, uh, they ought to be able to find the effort to be responsible in the climate issue. Russia is one of the largest emitters, of, uh, emitters in the world. If Russia wanted to show good faith, 
they could go out and announce what their reductions are going to be and make a greater effort to reduce emissions now. And maybe that would open up the door for people to feel better about uh, what Russia is choosing to do at this point in time. He's saying if Russia were to announce some sort of measure on climate change, people would feel better about the war in Ukraine? Is, is that a man who's too close to his job? That's a ridiculous, that's an absurd comment. Uh, I don't know uh, what he was thinking, but I can't defend that. That's an absurd comment. Uh, look, Putin's biggest crime is the invasion of Ukraine and uh, in killing, killing innocent people. And to think that if he had better climate policy, that that would uh, in any way excuse a brutal war is just foolishness. And uh, you should certainly retract that statement. And I, I really don't know what the guy was thinking. Yeah, well, uh, one thing is we won't have to listen to it anymore. Congressman Kana, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. We'll see you tonight. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.